Taiwan's President Chen appears to be on a collision course with the Chinese government. He's pushing for political reforms opposed by Beijing, and he wants to spend extra billions on Taiwan's defenses. But does he have the support of his people? My guest today is the chairman of the main opposition party, the Kuomintang. Nine Zhou, welcome to Hot Talk. Thank you. Does China pose a threat? to Taiwan? Yes. How grave a threat? Uh, it depends on the type of uh, situation you're talking about. Obviously, they have uh, uh, not all, but some of their military installations uh, directed against Taiwan. They have over 700 missiles mm -hmm. targeted directly at Taiwan. Yes. Not just Taiwan, elsewhere as well. They also have been conducting military exercises, which, according to the Taiwanese government, are clearly simulations of attacks on Taiwan. Mm -hmm. Yes. You agree with all of this? I don't agree. I know it exists. In that case, mm -hmm. why are you and your party adamantly opposed to the extra defense spending that President Chen and his team want to make? We are uh, we oppose. Uh, a reasonable purchases of arms, which might uh, put Taiwan in the position of arms race with the Chinese mainland. But we support reasonable purchases to maintain Taipei's uh, adequate defense and to demonstrate our determination to defend ourselves. I have made it several times. It's mm -hmm. quite clear. What is unreasonable about, give you a hand on about spending money on the latest missile defense systems, on the latest submarines that could offer Taiwan some sort of realistic, at least initial, defense against the Chinese attack. But the anti-missile uh, missile plan was vetoed by a referendum the President pushed uh, in March two years ago. In other words, uh, uh, he didn't, re re if he really wanted it, he shouldn't have put it to a referendum, but it was vetoed. But on other two items, I think there are some consensus on one of those, but uh, there are other uh, different opinions. But you have to understand that the original price tag was 18 billion US dollars. And when the news came out, most people, according to the opinion polls, were opposed to it. So the, minister, uh, the defense ministry now reduced the price tag from 18 billion to now roughly 11. So that's why our party has decided to come up with our own version of the policy at the end of this month. It's going to be reasonable and it will maintain Taiwan's adequate defense capabilities. Joseph Wu, the chairman of the Mainland Affairs Council in Taipei, he says that your party has blocked the expansion of the defense budget on 40 separate occasions. Yes, 45 times, so that they are willing to cut the uh, uh, spending from 18 billion to 11. And I think we have saved the country many valuable dollars as a result of our move. But what you have also done is take up valuable time. We began this interview with you saying, absolutely yes, Taiwan faces a serious threat from China. You don't have time to play with. No, actually the uh, arms purchase program was approved by President Bush in at April 2001, but the DPP government didn't make any action until 2004. They delayed the process for three years. So you're not, when you say, yes, we've blocked the measures or the, the proposals for expanded defense budgets 45 times, you don't regard that as a delay? No, because we want to make sure that all the items we are going to purchase are really suitable for Taiwan's defense. We should not spend and uh, we spend any money on arms that would not help us defend ourselves. What if you end up saying that on the day the Chinese invade? Well, if you said anything the government proposed should be accepted by the opposition party, that's not democracy. The opposition party has 
the responsibility to make sure that no money is wasted on a reasonable arms purchase. The Defense Minister, Li Jie, says, and I'm quoting, we are racing against time. If we don't do it today, that is, boost defense, exped defense expenditure, we will regret it tomorrow. So will you tell me here and now that you have now got some sort of consensus with the government on what to spend, how to spend it, and when? Yes, I think, uh, uh, I think people in Taiwan uh, think that uh, we should uh, purchase on, on a reasonable basis, and we have three exact events. What the defense minister said is understandable because he's a military man, and he believes that we need the uh, subs, the aircraft, but you are probably also aware that the subs will take us 8 to 15 years to deliver. But let, let's be specific then, because there will be a lot of people in the region watching this. Yeah. What, in your opinion, will be the final deal? What will be the extra defense budget and the extra uh, kit when that Taiwan ends up with? Yes. When we begin to consider arms purchase from the United States, we have to consider four factors. First of all, the cross-trade relations. Secondly, our defense needs. Thirdly, the, our financial capability and number four, the public opinion. And as you can see that uh, when this was uh, originally proposed in 2004, majority of the people didn't think that it's a uh, right budget for our country's defense. But public opinion changed gradually when the defense industry is ready to lower the price tag to a um, uh, amount which probably will be considered more acceptable than it was. I think this is a normal process in the budgetary discussions we've seen in the Parliament. In the spring of 2005, China passed an anti-secession law which clearly commits China to using, and I quote, non-peaceful means That's right. in any response to a Taiwanese declaration of independence. Now, do you regard China's passing of that anti-secession law as a fundamental break with the status quo that has existed for decades across the Straits of Taiwan?